Hello and welcome to What's Going On, a new segment in which myself, S.D. Wicket and Michael Curzon discuss the stories that don't quite make it to print. We're here today to discuss the bizarre outburst of a member of the COVID class, a uh, sage scientist. So, Michael, what's going on? Well, you say bizarre outburst. I think, actually, this this story, which we'll talk about, um, represents every aspect of uh, the the causes of and the symptoms of the last 14, nearly 15 months of madness relating to COVID. Um, so this this sage member, who, by the way, happens to be uh, a long a long committed communist, she's so dedicated. oh, it's her. It's it her. is. It took okay. me a little while yeah. to realise this, but she's so dedicated to the Marxist cause that she used to be nicknamed uh, Stalin's nanny. Which some people would say, oh, why does it matter that she's a communist? But of course, the, the whole idea of sort of state control and um, taking power away from the people despite the take that bit off actually because I'm, I'm going to ramble and say something wrong there um i might start thinking again once yeah. yeah do you want me to see we uh ready to no it's fine um you say uh bizarre outbursts there but i think actually this the story we'll talk about here fairly well represents uh every cause and symptom of the last 14, nearly 15 months of COVID madness. So what has happened is that this uh, SAGE member, and not just standard SAGE member, that, that is a, an advisor to the government on COVID, but a, a leading member of this group, who, by the way, happens to be uh, also a long-time committed communist. Uh, 40 oh, years it's the, her. It's yeah. her. Mm. Well, it, it took me a while. She's been in the uh, the Communist Party of Britain for 40 years now, and she's so dedicated to the cause of Marxism, she was once titled um, Stalin's nanny. Uh, so that, that sort of gives you an impression of her view of the relationship between uh, person and state. Now, she was interviewed on Channel 5 News yesterday, I believe it was, um, and asked about her view on social distancing rules and mask wearing rules and when it is these might come to an end. Um, she said, I think they, they should be extended a little longer into the future. Uh, but, you know, we have the vaccine and we have test and trace, but actually a third element is people's own behaviours that we need to get control of. Um, and when questioned uh, on exactly what she meant by a little while longer, she revealed that what she really meant, remember, this is a top advisor to the government. The government pays this person. Also take that out. I don't know if they're paid Damn. And remember, this is a top advisor to the government, someone uh, who the government listens to for advice on where to go next with lockdown, said these things should stay, quote, forever. Which really is the moment at which more and more people have to put tinfoil hats on because this proves uh, pretty much everything uh, a certain group of people have been saying for the past 14 months, that this has really got nothing to do with COVID. And in fact, she said... Um, forever not only for covid but also quote to reduce other diseases in the future so we we've talked so many times about how easy it is uh, for these people to gain control she's proved that it's not only going to be very difficult to take the control back from these people but possibly impossible that <laughs> we might have mm. uh, these diktats mm. in place over our heads for the rest of our lives mm. it's not a not a very handsome thought is it not quite wear, wear a mask stop the spread of hay fever <laughs> yeah well she actually ended the, the clip the interview by talking about other behaviors we need to change uh, and by the way she said that that mask wearing should become as normal say as wearing a seatbelt or picking up dog poo off the street that's what she was saying uh, and and that the activity of picking up a face mask before leaving the house should become as commonplace as picking up your keys before you leave, that this is the sort of behaviour she wants it to be like. And she ended by talking about the behaviour of people working closer so they didn't have to, to commute around other people, which, which I agree with, but not for her reasons. Um, her reason was to stop the spread of COVID initially 
but also then for the environment, which was a really interesting point, essentially admitting that the sorts of measures introduced under the guise of COVID are very likely either to continue or to be reintroduced in the near future for other means, for example, the environment. And people have said half jokingly, half serious um, over the past uh, 14 months that lockdowns could be introduced, for example, to respond to environmental crises and other things like this. So I mm. think she has uh, that this, if anything, was a bit of a gaffe that she reveals the true intentions of these people, the people at the heart of the advisory boards direct to government. The the devil on the PM shoulder. Yes, mm. um, we're rapidly approaching the point where people like you, people like me, people like Toby, um, Soon to be owed a grovelling apology when we said from the start that, th that this was a Trojan horse, something else is going to come in. This is the thin end of the wedge. You know, this won't end with coronavirus. Yeah, but I don't think an apology would be forthcoming. I mean, another element of this, um, I I'll, I'll read a brief quote. I think there's a lot of different behaviours that we've changed in our lives. We now routinely wear seatbelts. We didn't used to. We now routinely pick up dog poo in the parks. We didn't used to. When people see that there's a threat and there's something they can do to reduce that, to protect themselves, their loved ones, and their communities, what we have seen, it's the important line, what we have seen over the last year is that people do that. Now, when I heard her say this the first time, it reminded me of what Nar Ferguson said um, in December when talking about the Italian lockdown in February. So what he said uh, was, and again, I'm quoting, um, China is a communist one-party state, we said. We couldn't get away with lockdown in Europe, we thought, and then Italy did it, and we realised we could. I think that what this lady, and by the way, we've not said her name yet, her name is uh, Professor Suzanne uh, Mickey. Um, <laughs> who, who, who we should point oh, out yeah. is, a, is a professor of health psychology. Yes. This is not an epidemiologist. No, but that makes it more interesting because she's talking about the psychology of trying to make this, this madness, really, mask wearing and social distancing, mm. a, a common part of our lives, daily routine, mm. she says, again, quoting. So what, she's, what she says she's realised is that people get used to these things. They're happy to accept them. Again, what we've seen over the past year is that people do that. Essentially, Professor Mickey has realised that she and the government can get away with telling people to continue abiding by COVID regulations. And I think she's right. That's why I don't think, uh, not that we, we should get one because we've not done it for that reason, but I don't think lockdown skeptics will get an apology um, or even be told that they were right because people agree with this woman uh, and are likely to abide by much of it. Mm. Well, it, it, in keeping with the, 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 the communist tradition, there seems to be a, a sort of year zero thing happening here, right? Where everything before this is is not up for standard anymore. This is a complete reimagining of how it, we live our daily lives. And it's 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 in every level of government, you know. We, we hear more about a new normal than we do about going back to normal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can carry on quoting. I think that we can just begin to adopt routines. So again, this is the new normal. When we go out of the house, we check that we've got our phones, we've got our keys, we've got tissues, we've got a face mask in case we need to use it. It's not going to be a huge big deal, the kind of behaviours that we're talking about. I mean, that's her view. Um, when you look at the, she's a, she's, as you say, a, a, a science psychologist, she should know herself the impact that face masks have, especially on, on young people, yet the teaching unions continue to insist that school children should wear these wretched and pointless things. Um, and one of the things that really irked me about this, this video, it's available on, on Lockdown Skeptics now, you find my post today, uh, that's Thursday, and I'm, I'm writing it for Bornbrook as well, is that Channel 5 News made absolutely no effort to scrutinise any of these claims. I mean, this isn't somebody saying... I think we should extend lockdown by a couple of weeks, which itself is ridiculous. But this is another level to say, quite seriously, I think masks should remain forever for other reasons uh, is, at the end of the day, mental. Right. Mm. But the programme's presenter said absolutely nothing to question this. She just sort of laughed in a friendly way. Um, so, oh, yeah, it's very funny, isn't it? This is the, the world we're approaching. Um, and the opponent uh, on the channel 
who was there to discuss matters of unlocking and mask wearing. Um, I mean, if you wanted a balanced dis discussion, then you'd have someone who would disagree. But instead, what Channel 5 did was invite another professor from the same university, probably a, f a friend of Professor Michi, wouldn't surprise me, who said, I think Suzanne has made a very good point here. Um, adding that the vaccine rollout has created a false sense of security and concluding by saying, I don't think we're yet ready to unlock. That is the sort of balance that Channel 5 brings on. It allows someone without challenge uh, to say that lockdown uh, measures should be extended, not for a few weeks, but forever, um, and then has somebody else agreeing with them and isn't challenged. And we move on to the next segment. This is the the what we're dealing with here it's not just some lunatics asking for lockdown to be extended it's people at the heart of government advising government to enforce these things to remain in place forever and then the media not questioning it but question and then the media not challenging it but putting it out as if it was the obvious view having a healthy friendly little conversation about it and then moving on mm. it's absolutely awful it's it, it, it's evil Yes, I think at this point it is. It absolutely is. Um, yeah, I'm. 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 Honestly, I'm. I'm done with mincing my words around these types. These people are evil, and they should not have the position that they do in society. I mean, seriously. I mean, the idea that we need to completely reimagine daily life because of this virus is nowhere near deadly enough to warrant that. Yeah, it's, it's not even to do with this virus, though, as well. This woman thinks we should wear masks and socially distance for all sorts of reasons, for, for uh, the purpose of other viruses that may prop up in the future, for general uh, health purposes, as she says. None of it makes sense. I mean, also, if we're, if we're talking quite literally, the, the evidence of the reduction of children's immunity systems over the past year due to lack of contact has been horrendous. Um, so it, it's not even true in that sense either. Um, and on a human level, uh, destroys all the things that people live for. Mm. Yeah, we, whenever we make sweeping changes to the way we live, we have to do a very serious cross benefit analysis. And I've done that. I'm sure you have too. And my findings, at least thinking morally, were for the sake of a virus with an overwhelming chance of survival, even if you're you know of an at risk group. It's just it. It is not justified at all to yeah. inflict this uh, mandatory self humiliation on yeah. us. That's what it is on on a on a sort of society level. It's not just individual. This we're we're being mocked um, as a whole group, being told not to go near each other and to mask up every time we see each other. Um, these people aren't thinking straight. They shouldn't be anywhere near government um and uh, with them still there i don't see an end to the the current madness that we are being inflicted on. yes um which is where it you you have to almost do it yourself you know um i i've decided that from june's which us onwards i will not abide by a single rule well i haven't been for some time i sure I yeah yeah i mean i mean i mean I do little things like, like you know, if I'm nipping into Tesco, I'll I'll pop a mask on. But I mean, from from the tweet for someone, no more. Yeah, no, I quite agree. I quite. Agree. I mean, I I must say that what we can do, as you say, is do it yourself. Ignore what these people are saying completely. But the problem is that a lot of people watch these mainstream uh, media channels. Uh, people who don't have social media, which itself is a bit of a rot on this topic, uh, who don't. Um, seek outside news sources who are stuck to the mainstream and who listen to this unchallenged crap and take it in as being you know the official line which it is the the official line and they take it seriously and mm. and change their lives around that which oh, uh, uh, official lines because it changes every 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 two weeks seemingly i mean think think back to january when the first people were, were being jabbed and they were saying you know this is it this is this is the home stretch is our ticket to freedom well now according to sage or at least according to a, a member of sage a leading, that, member, of sage. A leading yeah. member of sage the vaccine isn't sufficient so it, it's not enough that you know the vulnerable are inoculated it's just it's it's now a matter of um well it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter if you're healthy or not you no longer have a choice in what you do or don't cover your face with. 
Mm, absolutely and, and, yeah it's it, it's it's it is beyond evil and i despair because so many people in wider society as as you said just haven't questioned it i i saw a video from the u.s recently where people who wear their masks uh outside um were being interviewed and uh all of them have been, have been vaccinated they all you know they thrust their arm out as soon as they could to get to get to get the jab um still wear their masks still don't, still don't see their friends they still you know follow all these ludicrous rules and it got me thinking well these people they've almost ceased to become people they just become mirrors of mass communication Mm, absolutely and i think so much of this is down to the people at the center of government who are deciding the line and also those in media who push out the line without challenging it who are completely unhinged and have to be taken as far away from government as is humanly possible as soon as possible and i think that is what's going on it certainly is unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately I, i'm sure one day we'll we'll do a slightly happier version of of a uh, of what <laughs> Surely, some point there will be a happy story that we that we we can cover on this show. But uh... well, I look forward to covering when Sage is disbanded and all these, uh, as I say, unhinged. Uh, it seems sometimes inhuman um, uh, advisors to the government are removed from government power. Um, until then, I don't think there is going to be very much in way of good news, at least relating to COVID, that we can talk. About. <laughs> that'll be a day that's so that's all for us this time around we'll be back next time something new is going on from michael and myself thanks for listening and we'll see you next time cheers